Hello, in this uh, slideshow I'd like to talk a little bit about the Earth's interior and connect that to information we know about earthquakes. Um, and this will be some basic material about what we find inside the Earth. And it's material that you're responsible for uh, on quizzes and the final. Um, and a lot of it from the book, but um, very much condensed. Here is a model for the structure of the Earth. This is one of the first things you should know. And that is that the Earth uh, is known by a variety of means to be, consist of uh, several layers. At the broadest scale, those layers include the crust, the mantle, and the core. Now the core can be broken up into two sections. The outer core, which is a liquid, and the inner core, which is a solid. Now, as we'll see uh, several times, we can also break up the upper layers of the Earth into um, finer grain details as well, including the difference between the continental and oceanic crust. When you combine that with the upper brittle mantle, we call that the lithosphere. The layer down below, which is the upper mantle but plastic, is called the asthenosphere. And then the mantle goes all the way down to the outer core. So, this is a, a big scale feature of the Earth, and uh, one of the questions is, how do we know this? But first, let's look at uh, some uh, other details. We're going to look here at the physical properties and the chemical properties of each layer. Now, the crust is a brittle part, a uh, rocky part of the Earth. Um, that is underlain by a plastic part of the mantle. Um, the mantle is made up of a mineral called peridotite, which consists of magnesium, iron, aluminum, silicon, and oxygen. And then the mantle becomes more plastic uh, and uh, more dense as we go deeper. Now the outer core is a liquid. It's made mostly of iron, sulfur, and nickel. Nickel's not listed here. And then the inner core, which is very hot, um, is solid, and it's a solid iron and nickel um, material. And the reason why it's solid and that's in the outer is liquid is because of the increase in pressure that um, causes this to be solid, whereas this is so hot that it uh, forms a liquid. So um, let's look at a couple of pictures from the textbook that show the uh, types of crust. There are two main types of crust. There's continental crust. And um, the continental crust ranges from 25 to 50 kilometers thick, depending on where you are in the continents. It's a mixture of igneous rocks, called plutonic rocks, and metamorphic rocks. And the composition varies. In the upper part of the crust, it's felsic, meaning lots of aluminum and silicon. And in the lower crust, it's more, a lot of mafic rocks, which are rich in magnesium and iron. Um, and then that's underlain by the mantle, which consists of this uh, material, this rock called peridotite. Now, one thing to note here is that this is 25 to 50 kilometers, and the deepest sample, the deepest drill hole we have is 12 kilometers. So how do we know what goes on below that? How do we know what is down below that when we don't have any samples or haven't retrieved any samples? The second type of crust is the oceanic crust, which underlines all the oceans. It's about seven kilometers thick. It consists of mafic igneous rocks, rich in iron and magnesium, and it has a specific layering in it. Um, the layering starts starting at the mantle, um, this igneous rock called gabbro, gabbro sills, and then there are these uh, other structures called dikes, but they consist of a rock called basalt. And then there are flows, basaltic lava flows at the upper part. And once again, we have not sampled a lot, and this is water up here. We have not sampled a lot of the ocean crust down to 2.1 kilometers. So how do we know what's down below this level? That is a good question. Well, the first piece of evidence we have comes from rocks. Okay, so um, these are two rocks. Uh, this one is from the mantle, and this one is from continental crust. And these rocks have been brought to the surface, and by looking at the minerals, we can tell that they came from great depths. Okay, so this is a rock called peridotite. The bordering rock, this grayish rock, is um, volcanic rock. And peridotite is a sample of the mantle. And this type of rock is brought up along uh, with, during volcanic eruptions and is ejected to the surface. So this is a piece of the mantle. 
Now this is a metamorphic rock, and it's called a gneiss, and when you look at the minerals in here, they indicate formation at great depth. And so this is what we believe the continental crust looks like at great depth. And this rock got to the surface during formation of mountains, where the mountains were built and uh, in included pieces of deep um, uh, continental crust uh, that came to the surface during erosion and faulting. So first piece of evidence is rocks. But we need a little bit more than that to get down to the deeper mantle and down into the core. And what we really need is we need some light. Just like we need light to see in the dark, we need some source of energy, some source of light in order to see inside the Earth. <clears throat> so our energy source is seismic energy okay, from earthquakes. So seismic energy is our light source to see inside the Earth. And I'm going to illustrate that with a couple of examples. Okay, so first, here is... A, um, a diagram that shows seismic wave velocity and depth. So one thing we do know is that as you go deeper into the earth, the seismic waves get faster, okay, because the rocks are getting more dense and the waves travel through the rocks faster. As a result of that, the seismic waves, as they travel through the earth, are refracted. They start bending towards the surface. Okay. And so we can use these features okay, to, in, to infer what goes on inside the Earth. And how does that work? Well, here's an example of that. So this is a cross-section of the Earth. Okay. Here's an earthquake source. And the green lines show the wave fronts for S waves. So S waves move out through or from the source and refract. They start to bend. Now, when an S wave impinges on the core mental boundary, because the, that layer is a liquid, they do not pass through it. And we saw that in class when we did our human wave. Okay, so no S waves pass through the outer core. And as a result, if you are located here, if you have a seismograph here, your seismograph will not record S waves, whereas it will record S waves here. So the seismic waves give us evidence that the outer core is a liquid. And this zone where we, there's no S waves is called the shadow zone for S waves. This is a very important diagram about how we use seismic changes in seismic velocity to infer the different layers in the Earth. So let's take a look at this. Here is the cross-section of the Earth structure. We have the lithosphere, a stenosphere, a transition zone, the lower mantle, core, and inner core. So on this side of the diagram we have seismic velocity versus depth. Okay, so this is kind of abstract, but let's assume that we're going to let's look at the S wave velocity curve first. And notice if you look at the details up here, there's lots of little wiggles. Okay, so each one of those little wiggles indicate there's been a change in seismic velocity. So if you were located down here and a seismic wave came through, you would note that it sped up after it passed the 410 kilometer level. And if you were down here, you would notice that the seismic wave velocity went to zero. Okay, so those changes correspond to the layers in the Earth's structure. We can look at P wave velocity too. So you can see the little changes in slope correspond to specific layers in the Earth. And a really big one here is notice it's really smooth going through the mantle and then rapidly decreases as it starts going through the liquid outer core and then increases a little bit. That's because the P waves, even though they travel, they travel much slower. Now if we look at an expanded view of the crust and the mantle, we can see this again. So notice the, this is P wave velocity. P wave velocity is increasing steady, it slows down in its um, increase, and then it hits this layer between the crust and the mantle called the moho, and the velocity increases. Okay, for continental crust, it's much deeper and increases again. So these changes in the slope of this line indicate 
the layers in the Earth. So this is how we use seismic wave velocities to determine what the inside of the Earth looks like. Okay, a brief summary. These are the things you should know. You should know the Earth is a layered structure. It includes the crust, the mantle, and the core. The core consists of the liquid outer core and solid inner core. You should know the composition of the different layers, roughly. And then you should know something about how we know. We know through drill holes, which go down as deep as 12 kilometers. We know through rocks that are now at the surface that formed at depth. And we know uh, about <clears throat> the internal part of the Earth through seismic energy from earthquakes and looking at changes in wave velocity. There's a lot of other data in the book, uh, but I'm not requiring you to uh, know that. So I hope this helps, and please let me know if you have any questions.